My name is Kit. My name is Madison. And I'm Steve. And this is Streaming Things. Streaming the boys. The boys. The boys. You the got fucking your, boys. You got your own set of boys here. You got Kit Laser. You got Steve. You got Madison. You put them together. They're the goddamn fucking Spice Girls. Yeah, I, I should trim girls. that clip. <laughs> <laughs> We're the goddamn fucking Spice Girls. Didn't you say in the season, it was the season two recap, that I was Sporty Spice? I think I, I think, would have said that. Yeah. yeah. Was that the one where you weren't around? Yes. And I just called I you sporty here. while you weren't? It's just because yeah. you play sports and we don't. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> what Spice Girls do you think you are? I feel like Sporty, sporty, sporty Spice good? is pretty, pretty okay. on point. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any like thoughts as to our Spice Girl your identities? Your Baby Spice. Ooh. And then your Posh Spice. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> you're David clearly Beckham? Yeah, you're clearly Victoria Beckham. All right. I like it. Mm -hmm. I don't get that reference. They're married. Oh, really? Yeah. Or at least they were. Are they still married? They're still married. Okay. Does he still bend it? Like I think, Beckham? I yeah. think so. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine. If, if he He's doesn't, probably less flexible. If he doesn't, one of his kids does. Uh -huh. they, Somebody's yeah. bending it. Yes, yeah, someone, yeah. someone in the household Probably is Probably Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I love that we can easily identify with the Spice Girls. Yeah, for Similar sure. Similar to yeah. how the boys can. Yeah, I mean, we're spicy for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, this is uh, episode three. If you've been listening to the coverage, uh, then this will be the third episode and you're pretty good at counting. Good job. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, this is, you know, this is the last episode for the week because, you this know, be all three of them were dropped on Thursday. Yeah. Our episode one came out Friday, episode two Saturday. Today, Sunday. If you're listening to this on the day, you might not be. But yeah, hopefully by the end of this episode, you're hooked on season four of The Boys because you're not getting one for another week. Oh, yeah. You're, you're, you got to wait mm -hmm. six days-ish. Yep. If you're wondering why we're kind of stumbling about what day it is today and being weird, it's, this is weeks before. <laughs> we're like, uh, math. What's the, co what's the content calendar? <laughs> I know it's like, we have the power to see this before anyone else. And so it's, it's messing with our production logistics. Yeah. What is time? Time travel. I'm wondering how you all are feeling. And so email streaming things pod at gmail.com and let us know your thoughts on season four so far. Uh, cause again, you know, this is ideally going to be the big episode where you're roped in for the rest of the season because they dropped all three at once. You think they would have structured it that way. And there's only five episodes of the season left. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do here, we're going to talk about our overall thoughts on episode three, and then we'll dive into a scene by scene, play by play recap. We'll wrap it all up with our diabolical moments, our top three favorite moments of the episode. Fucking diabolical. Indeed. And then we'll dive into the vault vault, perhaps. Uh, to talk about some Easter eggs from the comics or just anything we can pull out, if anything. And then finish it all with our Compound VIP Award, the favorite performance of the episode from each of us. And that's what we're going to do today. Let's talk about we'll keep the red flag flying here. That's not super easy to say. It's not. Madison, what are your overall thoughts on episode toi? It's French for three, if you toi. didn't know. Episode toi. Mm -hmm. um, this episode is interesting. I think... Um, we're like it has its good moments, but I feel like there have been some questionable character choices. Um, like I don't know, I, I feel like a lot of the actions done by these characters are. I don't know. It's it's just very interesting. I'm I'm I feel like I'm still settling into like this new version of these people. Um, like I, I guess for example, like Butcher throwing away the the cookies. Uh, like completely going against his plan that he made with Jeffrey Dean Morgan, whose character I forgot the name of. He's What's just Joe Jeffrey Kessler. Dean Morgan. Just Joe? Joe Kessler. I Joe refuse Kessler. to call him that. <laughs> yeah. J um, JDM. And then Annie having this, like being intimidated by Firecracker and Frenchie being high during a mission. Like, I don't know. There are just certain elements of like these characters' actions that I was like, that just doesn't seem like morally what they would do in, in these situations. And I mean, I'm sure that there's some like combat to those choices. Um, but there just seems to be some weak plot points that is kind of driving the story along uh, to get to the bigger picture. Um, but I would say overall this episode was okay. Um, I'm still, I'm going to give the, the show some grace and, you know, I know that they're still probably establishing the groundwork and um, we're going to have some bigger moments later on in the season. But as of right now, I'm still a little, a little hesitant, curious to see where they're going to go. But it's my overall thought. Steve, what about you? 
I tend to agree with Madison here. Uh, I do think in the last couple episodes, I said how like the show is really, really funny. And I still think it is like, I think when the humor, when they go for humor in the season, I feel like the humor lands every single time. But like Madison said, the, there are certain story plot threads that are moving the overall show forward that I feel like are incredibly weak. And like, I find myself not caring about your moves are weak. Your moves are weak, bro. I, I found myself like, not really caring about certain whole entire side plots, uh, either because like I just feel to Madison's point the character wouldn't do this, or it's just like oh here's new information to make a plot that just has never been revealed before. Like um, for instance, Annie's whole backstory in relation to like Firecracker and that mm -hmm. sort of thing, like that whole subplot like does not land for me at all. There's like certain things where like ooh this and it's like. Well, you're just telling me that that was a thing now, so it doesn't land at all, and I don't really believe that ever even happened, to be honest, just the way you've written the characters up to this point. And then, of course, like the, the stuff with Huey's mom, I think we talked about that last episode, how it's just not landing. Um, I will say that like the past season of The Boys, I think even season two, this was true, where those seasons don't really start cooking until like episode five or six is when it's like, ooh, we're, we're cooking here. So I'm also going to kind of like, okay, let's see what happens later on. But as of right now, I'm enjoying the, the show. I am being entertained by the show. But it's definitely so far, I feel nowhere near as strong as some of the other seasons at this point in time. Well, what about you? I agree with you. I think um, this episode is the weakest of the first three. And it should be the strongest, ideally, especially if you're going to do a three-up drop on the first day. Mm -hmm. It should be like the one where you're like, oh, fuck, there's no more. Dang. We're at this point. You know, if I was watching this at, at, at home on Thursday, I'd be like, I'm good for a week at least. You know, uh, yeah. like you said, like I'm in, I'm entertained. But like I hold the first two seasons to be some of the best television uh, out there. Yeah, and, I, I, and I like yeah. three more than most people. Mm -hmm. So it was like, ah, you know, I do see what I at first thought was a flaw to be just like a really honed in theme of this season, which is like the, the darkness of the past. Mm. Um, we see, um, starlight butcher, um, confronted with things coming back to them, especially Frenchie, then Kamiko. So it's like, fuck, like you guys did this with every character. And at first I was like, couldn't think of anything else to do other than like a, a dark past. <laughs> uh, I, I, but I when it came to way, Huey's mother yeah. doing the same thing, I was mm -hmm. like, oh, okay, this is just like a hard theme. Yeah, there, there's a lot of the stuff is like, okay, like I, with Frenchie specifically, like his whole thing, I'm kind of like, I feel like he's already, we've been down this track with him before and they're just oh, this is a different version of what he's been through. But it kind of, it just feels like not as organic. It feels very forced to me. Yeah, mm -hmm. because also his character, you know, we meet him and he he's very accepting of who he is in terms of like his abilities and what he's done. And so it's just kind of interesting to see him shift to have, like he's always had empathy. Like he has empathy mm -hmm. towards Kimiko and like they have a very sincere, passionate relationship. But then, like for it to be just focused on this one family that he, I'm sure, you know, it just, it's kind of a stretch for me to believe that this is how he, he would be so just dis disturbed by this. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think Frenchie's for me is the most believable. Mm -hmm. Um, it's Starlight's that's super weak to me. Yeah, Starlight's like, oh, it's mean to you when I was 12. Sorry. Like, yeah. you're a fucking <laughs> racist, horrible piece of shit, terrible gutter. Right. Sorry. Uh <laughs> well, in the, so the yes, I, I agree with you. I think Frenchie's is, even though it's still kind of a stretch for me, but I think of all of them, that is the strongest one. I feel like the Starlight Firecracker one is interesting because they kind of did that already with Supersonic. Like they brought him in as part of her mm -hmm. part of her past, not so much so as like a villainous character or anything, but like kind of a snippet, right? And um I, I don't know, I just am kind of like I feel like the reason that they're doing it is so they can almost kind of force feed you a different narrative. Like that's kind of focusing more on like the, the media push. Like, I don't know if firecracker is that for Annie, like to, I don't know, to, to, I guess, sway more into like their, 
their themes with wanting to highlight what's going on in media at the time. Like, I don't know if they're using that relationship to show that or. Yeah. I almost feel like they don't even need to have that added element of backstory between the two characters for Mm -hmm. this to, for her to not serve the same purpose. Like I think firecracker could serve the exact same purpose they're doing with her and not have that, that tie in. Like you could just have her, find that out like or, yeah you can just have her just kind of just be like hey i know who you are you're obviously a famous person i'm gonna take you down like that's what a lot of like these people that have you know podcasts like that who are all about antagonizing popular people they just do that in their day-to-day yeah right the only thing that i like about it is that it's um, a commendable effort to add some flesh to a joke character otherwise like you get mm-hmm. to see Oh, like this is just, and I can say this as a white trash, but like you, <laughs> as a white trash. Yeah. You, you get to see this, like, you know, white trash, you know, person who grew up in poverty, trying to work, to work, to be accepted. And then this, mm-hmm. in her mind, pretty privileged girl just shitting all over her and embarrassing her and any attempt to rise above her station. And so it, it kind of helps you sympathize a little bit. Yeah, with but somebody. I, so it does seem fabricated on Starlight's part, but like yeah. I get what they're doing and I appreciate an attempt to like, these are how these people are made in our society. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Right. Like, sure. And that's what I was saying. I think you can ha- still have that without the direct tie in that they're creating between the two characters. Cause that's the thing that feels really forced and out of character for Anne. How would you have that though? How would you have that organically? You could literally just be someone like, you know, she's, she's talking to a train or something about how she was picked on. Or I mean, there, there doesn't even need to be like this direct, I mean, we're talking about what ifs and you know, all this other stuff, but like Mm -hmm. off the top of my head, I'm like, you could have had, you know, firecracker and Annie still being like growing up together, experiencing pageants together, but like starlight always like kind of winning, not even needing to have like this Mm -hmm. direct slut shaming. thing. Yeah. Like I I feel like there could have been this like firecracker recognizing, Oh, this, this bitch has privilege this, you know, whatever her parents love her, you know, whatever there, there could have been a whole other narrative focusing on firecrackers character kind of like kind of giving her some more depth as far as like why she thinks the way that she does and why she has, you know, is seeking vengeance on Starlight because of her past. You know, there, there's so many things I feel like they could have pulled from. And I feel like the direct, like you started a rumor about me, like it's just kind of like that's a cheap shot of a story plot to use for women, I guess. I don't know. Maybe that's a strong statement to say, <laughs> but it just. I think it's fair though. Yeah, it just seems kind of like, I don't know. I'm not buying it. I'm still kind of like, okay, I'm excited. To, I'm curious to see where this goes, but I'm not like, oh, like that's, that's a deeply rooted, like I totally can understand why Firecracker mm-hmm. feels that way or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. So I think for me, the biggest retread is, um, is Kamiko in the whole shining yes. light thing. Like we've yes. definitely yeah. been there before. That yeah. seems yes. like a complete, Oh, we're back. Mm-hmm. Um, cause she had like a complete arc and then chose to rejoin the boys. And that's what you're doing with her character is having her revisit the shining light trauma. Um, but I do like Frenchie's stuff. Cause like as someone who's in a 12 step program, it's like, I like that. I can see Frenchie's path as he's come to terms with it. He's working on the therapy of it. He's feeling better. He's in a 12 step program. And then he's directly confronted with somebody whom he affected you know, um, so like in my case, maybe I like stole their wallet or something, you know, so like I'm living this good life. I'm doing good. I'm trying to be nice to people. I'm doing good in society. Mm. I'm eight years sober or whatever. And then I run into somebody. Oh, I recognize them. They don't even recognize me yet. You know, like, oh, I wonder if they had to get a new ID, new credit cards, cancel all the stuff, whatever. Right. And it's like there is this like feeling of. How dare I just move on and be so happy uh, when, you know, there they are, like, what do I do? You know? Mm-hmm. And, and then actually in the 12 step program, you're supposed to make amends. And how does Frenchie do that? He, in his case, it's not like he stole a hundred <laughs> bucks. He murdered his mother, father, and brother. Right. So Sister. it's like, or yeah, yeah, his whole family. Um, and so he's just like racked by this guilt and also selfishly, he wants to continue enjoying the, the company, you know? Mm-hmm. So it, it's, I can, I, I see the torture there. Colin's cute. It, but it's the Kamiko stuff where I'm like, and I love, you know, you guys know how much I love Karen you, Fukuhara. You, you love her. So I'm like, fuck, dude, why are we doing this again? Um, and also there's this fear that it's, they're just stretching, you know? I'm starting to have that fear too, because like, while I like the jokes, a lot of the funny stuff doesn't really serve that much of a purpose mm-hmm. in the grand scheme of things. Erica has been watching the show as well. And she came up to me, she hasn't seen season four or anything yet, but she came up to me and she's like, how long are they going to be running away from Homelander? Like, how long can they stretch that fucking out? And it's kind of like, 
Yeah, I mean, how yeah. how long can you do that story? Interestingly, right? And yeah. so if they keep stretching it out, it's kind of like, what are we gonna do here? You know? Yeah, we'll see. Mm -hmm. We're here for the ride. Let's dive into the meat of episode three and uh, see what specificity. We are can... we doing the deep? Dive? Yeah, we're going. We're doing our the deep dive, deep dive. right now. Wait, before we do this, you guys want me to order up some uh, a blooming onion real quick? Mm -hmm. <laughs> never had one. For, oh, You've never had a blooming what? onion? <laughs> yeah, is it good? Bro. Very delicious. Bro, did you see what that shit did to Sister I mean, Sage? I eat a God lot. Damn. That's, what, that's what happens when that, I eat a blooming that's, onion. That's the realest thing the show's ever done. Yeah, you just draw the nearest guy into your arms and say, eat this with me. Yeah. And I mean yeah. the onion. You watch trash TV. <laughs> Interesting. Let me see. Let me see if, uh, I mean, I've eaten a lot of fried pickles. I'm pulling up DoorDash right now. I mean, it's pretty. It's a. It's an event. You you order a blooming onion when you go to is it Texas Roadhouse? Outback. No, Outback. 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 I see. That's the thing. I've only been to Outback like two, three times in my life. Outback. I mean, why would you? Outback. Steakhouse. Exactly. <laughs> you know, Gold Stars right there. Oh, the number one item on on the DoorDash for Outback: a blooming onion. Are you getting one? I think I should. Yeah, fuck it. You guys want anything else? For <laughs> <laughs> no, no. No, I'm We'll just good. smash a blooming. All right. Australian onion. Australian onion? A blooming, blooming onion. onion. No bloom sauce. Who's that option for? What? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know, man. Oh, Savages. Man. All right, so I'm, I'm ordering it. There I we love go. That. There we go. Maybe like uh, uh, when you turn on to episode four, we'll be chomping on it. Just like we'll give you the full review of how of how <laughs> Kit Laser views the Bloomin' Onion. It'll be two reviews. Review of the boys and review of the Bloomin' Onion. As we wait for the Bloomin' Onion to arrive, <laughs> we will do our the deep dive. Uh, it opens with a uh, America the Beautiful being sung at a rally. Um, there's a Starlighter protests going on. Chaos politically popping off all over the place. Uh, and Homelander, it keeps kind of hinting that he's close to snapping, right? So we get this little, the sound design pops in and like he's, he's ready to just laser eye everybody. Um, and the godless non-binary socialists are afoot as Homelander points out. And again, he's just completely, afoot. he's just completely pandering. Um, I'm just pandering. They call out the the seven. He's announcing the different members. Firecracker and Sage have been added. But I love that Black Noir is doing like the <laughs> kung fu fist pumps. Man. Do, do too much. Doing too much, buddy. Doing too much, man. <laughs> and you're right, Steve. He is an actual actor. Literally. That is mm -hmm. a, That's uh, so funny. Which, of course, he is. But at the same time, I was like, I mean, he definitely has superpowers. But the right? answer is just that he is an actor with superpowers. So <laughs> do we even know he has he's superpowers? A, he's yet? an acting soup. We don't, I guess. But I'm telling you, you can't hit a guy with a baseball bat and explode their head with normal human strength. I don't know. I don't know. You get Ken I, Griffey Jr. in there. <laughs> he's just a baseball player. Actor. Or, uh, that's more believable to you in Bob. this universe. Well, they could be Who giving are, him temp V. Like they could be juicing well, yeah, him up. Yeah. You know? What was that dude's name in the nineties? And I was like, Oh, he's going to break the Mark record. McGuire. Yeah. He ended up juicing. He was using temp V. <laughs> yeah. Uh, him and, um, are you proud of me for n knowing that was a thing? The guy that played for the Cubs. Oh, what was his name? It was two of them. Oh, I don't know. Are Sammy you guys Sosa. Sporty Spices right Sammy now? Sammy Sosa. Oh, Sammy Sosa. And Mark McGuire. Yeah, we're being Sporty Spice right <laughs> being now. being Sporty Spices? I know about 90s sports because when I was okay. a kid, before I realized who I was, I like tried. You know what I mean? So I'm like, yeah, balls, guys. Am I right? Mm, you know? <laughs> balls. And then I realized I liked different balls. <laughs> balls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Any who's all. Uh, Joe Kessler. Uh, or Jeffrey Dean Morgan, if you're Steve. JDM. And Butcher in the next scene are talking about basically fentanyl, you know, <laughs> a whole shitload. I'd go to Kentucky to get this. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to give to Ryan, trick him, knock him out, bring him to us. He wants to train Ryan to grow up and or maybe not even grow up, but to kill Homelander is mm -hmm. uh, Joe Kessler's big plan. How do right? you train someone to grow up? Um, you know, <laughs> grow. grow. Honestly, most people never learned it. That's so true. I'm not sure. I definitely didn't learn no, it. No, no, no. We're sitting here talking about superheroes and balls and the microphone surrounded by toys yeah. and balls. And, and balls. balls. Yeah. It's definitely didn't fault. learn it. Males mature later. I was, I'm thinking by the time I'm they 40, are. they do. Probably going to be halfway there. Halfway there. Mm -hmm. I'll still I, think balls are funny. All the while, women mature at like 13. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the way of the world. Yep. Yep. Who runs the world? Girls. That's right. So Beyonce Girls said. Do. Women. It's Steve, it's not do, it's just girls. Girls do. <laughs> girls, girls. Um, firecracker is uh, she's an anti vaxxer, she's yapping she's about vaccines, of course, she is. 
and Sage what is. What was the, I, oh, it was the, she, her line was like, don't get the vaccine. It'll cause autism, not the cool autism mm-hmm. like Rain Man. I'm like, <laughs> Jesus Christ, yeah. this woman. So yeah. bad. And Sage just basically feels like she's being punished for standing up to Homelander even though that was her whole job. She, and that's why she's got to wear a super suit now well, and be in the public. Yeah, she didn't want to be in the seven originally. No, right? she wanted to be a like, guy in the chair. Yeah. Yeah. She, like, she, she kind of fucks up our whole thing that I'm in the public eye. Right. Yeah. And he's like, eh, I don't care. But he, and he's also like, why did we get her, like referring to Firecracker? Like, why did you recruit her? Like, she's useless. And she's yeah. like, well, she's going to make all those people out there a lot louder. Right. Because yeah. her whole plan is to get the people to turn on each other and Homelander swoops in and saves the day. Right. Or the seven, at least. Yep. Yeah. And what is firecracker's power? All we see is like a literal, like little firecracker thing. I, I think she just like snaps her fingers and does and a little sparky spark. She's just yeah. literally like a sparkler. Well, I, wasn't that her name? Spark, yeah, sparkle? I think, I think so. Yeah. Is she basically like a, a, a worse Jubilee from the X Men? She's a walking. I think so. She's a walking lighter. Mm. A little bic, like psh. that was lamp lighter. Well, I don't know. Well, she can she can spark the fire. Lamp yeah. lighter couldn't spark the fire. He could just because he, he needed to have yeah his yeah. torch. I don't know. Maybe she's like really popular on the 4th of July and just mm. like. She is. Yeah. America. She's going. Pew, 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 pew. America. Sage has this really great line in this exchange where she says that popularity is a prison. And I thought that was great because she's saying that in reference to like, oh, I can't really. It's harder for me to do my plans because everyone's eyes are on me. Yeah. But the fact that she's saying that to Homelander, who is this character where like he should understand popularity right. is a prison. More than anybody, but he's just kind of like, well, yeah, I'm, 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 you know. That's how he talks too. Yeah. Weird, yeah. weird choice yeah. by Anthony Starr. Yeah. <laughs> See? <laughs> Chicago gangster from the 30s. Like, that's weird. Put him up. Season four is wild. Yeah. I'm not lazy. There. We got to Huey trying to remove his mom's power of attorney. He's talking to his like lawyer buddy uh, at the Starlight House, and there's basically nothing he can do. He's just going to have to get used to it, right? Why don't you just talk to your mom? And he's like, nah. I don't want to. Um, nope. And Frenchie wants to talk to Colin. He's kind of um, going back and forth on how to how do you how do you approach that? You know, hey, I killed your whole family. That's my beef. Hey, good news, bad news. Yeah, the bad news is killed your family. Good news is huh? I got a blooming onion from Outback <laughs> Steakhouse. <Ooh. laughs> Colin's like, <laughs> you wait, got a wait, point. Hold on. You got blooming sauce? Did you get bloom sauce? Yes. Is, what is the oh, blooming good. sauce? Oh, Colin's no. like. Psh- Shoots him. Frenchie wouldn't get the Bloomin' Sauce. I did not understand. I did not understand. Bloomin' Sauce? I did not know. In France, we did dry. <laughs> we rolled out the onion. We dip it in the lukewarm water. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they would do. Um, <laughs> that one got Madison. <laughs> lukewarm water. <laughs> oh my God. And it's at this point that, like, this crazed, you know, for lack of a better term, MAGA guy comes in. Uh, and he's got yeah. a gun and he's upset about he wants to find the adrenochrome source kids in the basement. Yeah. You know, he's, we don't he, have a basement. He's fully uh, pilled on all this stuff. He's trying to be and he's packing heat. Yeah. He's yeah. trying to be a hero here. And, you know, I interpret it. He's he's literally taking what Firecracker is saying as truth and yeah. is going in and is trying to be the this hero. Is, he got blown this up is, by the truth bomb. Yeah. Mm-hmm. White savior guy. Yeah. This is a direct correlation to the whole like pizza gate conspiracy. Yes. That's going on. Cause that yeah. actually, that actually happened. A guy actually showed up at a random pizza place with a gun and was like, where are the kids? And they're like, uh, pick up or delivery. Uh, like, yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> <Pick up or laughs> delivery. Uh, <laughs> square cutter triangles. <laughs> On the kids. <laughs> um, yeah, and then uh, Frenchie disarms him, right? So in the bathroom, Frenchie tries to resist Colin's seductive wiles, but cannot. You know, he doesn't want to, like, have sex with him and, and make out with him because he feels so guilty, but also it feels so good. Mm-hmm. Can't stop. Feels good. Uh, the president wants to ban superheroes is the point of this next scene. That's all we got. The president's name is Springer, right? Yeah. Okay. Singer. Not Jerry. Singer. Singer. Ah. It's Singer. Okay. That was the thing. I, Jerry. I, Jerry. Jerry. Every Jerry. time I would write his name down, my, my iPad autocorrects it to Springer. Oh. So I couldn't remember, like, is it actually Springer or is it Singer? Because I think it's Singer, but I, but it keeps writing Springer. I don't know. So weird thing. My iPad likes to go rogue sometimes. Mm. Well, yeah. President Singer wants Singer, to ban Singer. soups and he calls Newman in as VP and like he knows that she's a soup so he's fucking mm-hmm. with her, you know, and she's like, oh, really? <laughs> oh, he didn't call her in. They were having this meeting about uh, introducing this bill that would ban soups from being in the military and government positions and all that and she walks in like, 
oh, hey, guys. Yeah. Uh, weird that your secretary didn't tell me this meeting was happening. He's like, huh, d- weird. That well, is weird. She put a folder down of like superhero affairs or something like that. Like the bureau, I, of the bureau that she runs. Yeah. 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 That's right. That's how she made her mark in politics. Uh, mm-hmm. But but yeah, singers like soups or entertainers. We should put them back on the mass singer where they belong. Mm-hmm. Which this is a I real think, show. This sort of plot line, I think they're not doing enough with it in a weird way. I agree. Because in another world, on another TV show, if this was, say, X-Men, and they had legislation like this that was, like, inherently, like, prejudiced towards people with superpowers, you would be like, government bad, that's terrible, right? You would be on the side of the the superheroes or the mutants in Mm X-Men. Whereas in this show, because so many of the superheroes slash mutants are, like, devilish people you're kind of like yeah put them on the mass singer like, like <laughs> so and i think that that dichotomy is a really interesting playground to be in mm-hmm. like you could really make people be, feel like ooh, i don't know how i side on this but i don't feel like they're really kind of going to this well enough because i guess the, I, yeah, the main smart. plot is that right you know what i mean because that's been another question i've had is like what is like the what are what are they all working towards? And I assume it's what Singer is wanting to do, right? Yeah, there's that. I think it's more um, stop vault is vault is the Kessler main. and Butcher and Ryan and Homelander is more the center of this season, I think, uh, and the future of the show. I would I would guess mm-hmm. then, like I would imagine the. You're right. It's a huge part of this season, but I imagine the Singer stuff will be wrapped up at the end of season four. Mm. Um, and Newman will be president or something would be my prediction. Sure. Ooh, he's calling it now. He's calling Ooh. a shot. Something like that, you know? Yeah. And then we're going to have to deal with the reckoning in season five there. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I, I like the, the idea that this isn't being delved into enough because the whole reverse X-Men is interesting. Yeah. Cause that's what the show's good at is taking superhero comic lore that we're very familiar with and kind of playing with it and flipping it on its head. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I like that. I like that idea. Basically, every scene with Newman and Singer together is her entering a room and Singer looking at her and going, Newman. <laughs> Jerry Springer. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Seinfeld. I get it. Yeah. I got it. I got it. <laughs> Did you guys watch Seinfeld? I what's know. the deal with well, Seinfeld? Well, what's the deal with these? Scenes? I haven't seen I every have episode. I have not seen it. There's one where they can't find their car. Remember that? I do remember In the that. Parking yeah. garage. Yeah. I've actually been meaning to do a Seinfeld rewatch. It's been a long time since I've seen that show. Yes, it's time. I want, to, I want to know if it ages any, if it aged poorly or not. Yeah, probably. Mm, probably. I mean, it's on my list to watch because I've never seen it. But you, did I sit? Did the Newman joke? Did you get that one? No. 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 Okay. All right. She did not. There's a character named Newman in the show, played by Wayne Knight, who's Dennis Nedry in Jurassic Park, and oh, Jerry Springer yeah. hates him, and so every time, but he's like Kramer's buddy. Mm-hmm. So every time they like run into each other, there's this Newman like. <laughs> You I get, now I get it. You see sitcoms. Yeah, I, I get you. I get you. Uh, we cut to Kamiko, um, who's like agreeing with her therapist in the sense that she's going to kill all of Shining Light. Like that's the that's the leap she went to <laughs> yeah. for absolution. Um, and uh, MM wants to flip a train. He wants to bring him over to their side. He knows when somebody can be flipped. I know when they're close. That's mm-hmm. my whole job, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so they decide to go down that. So that's the big movement in the next scene there. And Ryan is playing. Uh, this was so cool. Mortal Seven Combat, basically. <laughs> I fucking loved what it, was it so called? much. Tournament of Heroes. I think so. Yeah. yeah. And it's Lamplighter v. Uh, what's her name from season three? Crimson Countess. Crimson yeah. Countess. Yeah. yeah. And it's uh, Don't Be a Cunt. Sixty nine <laughs> logs in. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Which you're never allowed to make something like that your username. I've tried. Yeah, I don't think it don't be it won't let you. you. Well, in this world, you definitely would be. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably like Votbox or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Vot Station. I wonder V-box. If, V-box. Oh, I don't like that. I wonder if they work. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if they actually work with Netherrealm Studios, the people who make Mortal Kombat, because this is legit one for one Mortal Kombat to the point where like I'm pretty sure I actually am pretty sure that the models that they're using are based off of um, the Injustice game. So like I think yeah. Lamplighter is the Aquaman because mm-hmm. like that spin staff move. I remember that's something Aquaman had. I, I, I can't really figure out what who uh, Crimson's Counts is supposed to be. But like even like the whole fatality thing mm-hmm. and like yeah it, that, that was as a huge Mortal Kombat fan. I, it's well, it was, it was just like on. it was cool how they introduced 
butcher communicating to Ryan. Like, yeah. Him, he hacked in and found yeah. his gamer tag. Yeah, it is kind so of, cool. It is funny because, like, you know, whoever wrote this scene, like, doesn't actually play video games online because the fact that, like, the animations are happening, it's like, Butcher, is that you? And, like, the game characters are talking to each other. Like, right. yeah. <laughs> that, that's not how, that's no. not how chat works. <laughs> <laughs> but it games. was still, it was still, like, I remember watching it being like, that's fucking cool. Yeah. I like that. And the I fatality like this was very the boys. Like, yeah. honestly, it was I would gratuitous love. in a Mortal Kombat way, but it was also, like, uh, like uh, uh, childish and like oh we'll stick the pole up the butt like in yeah. the way the boys is yeah. yeah I would love a like the boys injustice game that'd be so awesome with all these like you could play as a train and stuff like that'd be well isn't killer. It, correct yeah. me if I'm wrong but there isn't there a game where it's like it's well it's injustice and DC care no those are the same Mortal, thing Mortal Kombat versus DC yes yes that is so I feel and I feel like there's been like skins to come out for like. Like other people. Well, it's so the the most recent Mortal Kombat game, Mortal Kombat One, um, actually Homelander is a DLC character, oh, and yes. I think Homelander comes out either this week or he comes out very soon. Okay. If, if he's not so the idea out that now. they worked with that studio on this is pretty likely. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. But the animations are great. Like his, like when he walks onto the screen, like because they always have like a little animation before they fight. He's like got the milk and he's like, mm, he's like yeah, putting his tongue it. down the milk and everything. It's like really funny. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Homelander's about to snap yet again. He's watching Starlight. Um, I'd do anything for you, Homelander. Yeah, and Firecracker <laughs> is anything. very adamant. Anything. Mm -hmm. Anything. Like we could have sex. Anything. Just saying. Anything. And he's like <laughs> literally <laughs> anything. Uh, okay. <laughs> he's like, okay, thank you. Not my thing. Bye. Uh he still misses Stormfront. Mm -hmm. and, and this is where Noir goes in this whole thing with Ashley about being an actor. I just need to know my motivation. I want to know what's going on. Just you give just, me direction. You need to shut the fuck up. Like, that's your whole thing is you just don't talk, right? Yeah. You just cannot get that. And he, I think he's going to die this season probably. Oh, well. definitely. For sure. For sure. Uh, sure. Ashley I, is... I, I hope they actually, like, like keep him around the whole time. <laughs> like, I like expect him to die. And, like, there's, like, scenes of, like, oh, they get, they're going to... Oh, they didn't get him this time. It's yeah. a great bit, honestly. It's one of my favorite things it's about funny. this season. Ashley is relegated to mascot and, and basically publicly shamed into fucking off to, from the conference room. Every CEO need, or every company needs a figurehead like Ronald McDonald. <laughs> <laughs> and Sage is the new CEO, basically. Mm -hmm. I do. Um, I will say I think Sage is like one of my favorite characters of the boys. She She's great. I love her so much. There's things that develop that I really enjoy for sure. Noir is a narcoleptic. <laughs> And Which, if he is, wasn't funny enough. And it, we find out his name is Lars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, the actor's name is Lars. Like, is Lars fucking sleeping? <laughs> the oh fact that he gosh. just falls asleep is so funny. Yeah. <gasps> I'm a narcoleptic. Sorry, guys. Sorry. And the Deep is fired from um, the security detail, basically, because of the information that was leaked by A-Train. But they don't know that it was A-Train A yet. He's so petulant, too, because they're like, what the fuck? Deep is like, well, I didn't. Why like, he's not even, why is like, looking at me? He's not even like paying attention. He's like, well, I didn't do it. <laughs> Like, what the obviously, fuck, guys, <laughs> you are in charge of those files. Well, I didn't do it. Um, and then A Train during this gets a text from his brother Nate, or at least he thinks. Uh, Ambrosius tries to tell the deep that they need more quality time because he's got Ambrosius locked in the closet. Yeah. Uh, and he says it's for, I think it's for their protection so that nobody, you know, makes him eat her. You know what I mean? And he needs to clean that fucking tank. It's so disrespectful. It's I know. So, she's got to live in that Kate, poo. Stuff. Kate Blanchett should not live like that. Tilda Swinton. Tilda Swinton. <laughs> yeah, it's Tilda oh, Swinton. Oh, I put Kate Blanchett down. I wish it was Kate. If it was Kate Blanchett, I'd be into, Tilda into that is, octopus. Yeah. I feel it in the air. <laughs> the the, the poop flakes in the water. <laughs> Are you embarrassed by me? Why won't you talk to me, honey? Why won't you clean my goddamn cage? <laughs> yeah. Put your foot down or your tentacle down. Uh, and Ashley is flipping out. She's tired of being disrespected like this. She's ready to quit. I haven't had a doctor's appointment in three years. I've got enough yeast infections to open a goddamn Chipotle. <laughs> uh, Panera? Oh, is it Panera? It's gotta be a bread reference. Oh, well, oh, no, there's burrito bread. Uh, it's something like that. It's probably Panera. I wrote Chipotle. Does she say that, you know, Disney's been looking for yeah. a new yeah. uh, CEO or yeah, something? She could do better yeah. than Bob Iger. Yeah. But her, her, her pegging buddy is like tied up on the floor there. She's a ball stepper. Yeah, she is. She's one of those. Who mm. wants their balls crushed? I do. <laughs> this little baby. I love that she's like, shut up, you prom night dumpster baby. <laughs> like, she's so mean. <laughs> she's a dom. She is. I love she's it. She's a femdom. She is. I've never heard of it. I don't know what that is.
This episode of Streaming Things is sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp. You know, Steve, is there something I need to get off my chest? What's that, fella? It's been weighing on me. You know that I resigned at the day job recently, right? And I've been a little scared. There's a family to worry about. There's health insurance. There's capitalism. Sounds like a stressful time. But we all carry around different stressors, big and small. It feels better when you bring something to the light and keep them bottled up. It can start to affect us negatively. And therapy is a safe space to get things off your chest and to figure out how to work through whatever's weighing you down. In my case, it's all of the stress, the misery, the fear. But I had to come over here and share that with you. And I felt better. You know, that's a real thing that happened. Yeah. Uh, unloading all that on you and Erica and feeling better myself. That uh, sounds like my Friday night. Sometimes you just need somebody to listen. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. If you're not vibing, that's completely fine. So get it off your your chest with better help visit betterhelp.com slash streaming things to get 10 percent off your first month that's better help h-e-l-p.com slash streaming things it's the month of june and it's a very special month because our patreon tiers just got a huge upgrade at patreon.com slash streaming things and i want to thank the very special patrons who signed up to be super patrons of streaming things keeping the lights on for us day in and day out so thank you so much to album stink pot digimon digital monsters with a much longer name but i'm only saying those three words dylan dunkley's stanton valentino Mattelstat, Susie callahan anthony corona parmesan sun Shine, Ashley Hazen, Just Liz Calabria, Mike from New Hampshire, Brett X, Emily Scarano, Lil Tickler, Svento7, Jay Scramo, Bloth Pum, AK Ashley Ray, Adam Busby, Wendy O'Laughlin, Big Butthorn, Conrad, Jer Lektanovich, Kaylee Sampson, Rabbit Dog in a Barbie Car, Elpander, Charlie Friday, Alexis Adler, Peaches, Emmy, Haley B, Joe Velez, John Collins, Trisha Bueller, Sun Loving Mortal, Suzanne Rowe, Jen Robinson, Kalisha Reeves, Paula Garcia, Kevin Strother, Ashley Powers, Stephen V, Casey McCain, and Enza. Thank you all so much for supporting Streaming Things. And with that, let's get back to this episode. So then uh, Ryan shows up back to the butcher's apartment after he's been uh, talking to Butcher. Or no, he shows up at Butcher's. They have the conversation and Butcher fails to give him the cookies. He ends up throwing them away. He changes his mind, yeah. right? I don't want to do that to the kid. Sorry, my note for this huge scene was very short. Oh, I I, I actually really love this scene yeah. because he shows up. He's like, they're playing Connect Four. He's like, I got Connect Four. I got Lego. Um, but Ryan sees the, like his brain leaking or whatever that goo is that's coming out of his ears. And he's like really scared. He's like, I, I, are you are you scared to die? And I know you're lying. Because uh, Butcher kind of avoids the question. He's yeah. like, well, how, how's your foosball? Because you know? he doesn't quite want to get into it. But yeah, I, I, I'm actually kind of shocked at how well the scenes with Ryan and Billy work for me in this episode. Yeah, he can tell that Butcher's lying. Um, and we cut back to uh, M.M. waiting for A-Train. And he's pissed that it's not Nate. Like that, you fucking called me here, what? Yeah, he cloned his brother's number. Yep. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's, we get this whole bit where A-Train's like, no, nah, giving a shit just gets you killed. You know, mm-hmm. uh, but ultimately he does gets hit by this idea that he could have some redemption, you know, but you're still standing there. Yep. Mm-hmm. You haven't left yet and you're super fast. You could easily be gone. Yeah. Like, oh, my God. Bye. Pew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kamiko and Frenchie are at the the shining light infiltration mission and Frenchie is tripping balls. He's, he's relapsed. This he's been so sober funny. and he needs the drugs to help him, you know, cover these feelings that are coming up. And so we get Kamiko fighting while he trips. And so it's just like bubbles coming out of people's heads. I liked yeah. the scene because you you have Kamiko's perspective, which she's like, you know, hardcore kicking ass and like, she's you know, throats. And yeah. Shit. And the, the music is very like, you know, actiony. It's like the the sounds from like her slashing throats. And then you cut to Frenchie, who's like seeing these floating ducks and these bubbles and uh, kind of this like euphoric music dubbed over Kamiko fighting. He and just, it's just, I like the hard cut back and forth. It was just really fun. He just had a slight melange of hallucinogens. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nothing unusual. Right. No. And he, he, he starts to see Colin and all the dead people that he's killed, mm-hmm. not just Colin's family, but everybody. Uh, so he's having a bad trip. Uh-oh. 
Uh, and then a girl that Kamiko knows attacks her. We don't know who she is yet, but she gets attacked uh, and lets her go. And they just kind of run out of there. Yeah, Kamiko's a little upset. And I'm like, where'd you go, bro? You're that supposed was, to be hanging out with us. That was really hard. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't be, though. Superhero. Uh, literally invincible, you know? In fact, well, why did I even bring you? It's, yeah, a little, so, it's a little rude of I, me. I wanted a hype man back there going, <laughs> oh, damn. Oh, Every time I cut a guy's throat out. Damn. We cut back to Butcher and Ryan playing foosball. Foosball. Um, yeah, and this is where, you know, Butcher, well, Ryan mentions the save, right? Like, so Butcher's like, hey, I saw you, you know, and Butcher, I like how Butcher knows that they're scripted, you know? So he's like, you, you handled all your lines so well. Like, you went great, you know? <laughs> yeah. And he's like, oh, I accidentally hurt the guy, right? And he starts, he breaks down, like, you know, and Butcher, I like how the implication is like, is, is, he, is he okay? And Ryan just starts crying, like, and Butcher's mm -hmm. like, oh, okay, you exploded him against the wall, didn't you? Got it. Um, but then this is where like Butcher gets honest with him and he's vulnerable for the first time. I think in the show's history, he's been like truly vulnerable with somebody like this, you know, that doesn't have like a quip behind it or some ulterior motive. Yeah. Um, and he ends up saying, I am, I'm terrified. I'm fucking terrified, you know? And he ends up throwing the cookies away. Too much sugar. Yeah. Says so he pushes people away because he's a bad man and he's, he has no right to be around a kid because Ryan asks him like, I wouldn't want me either because which is something he said to Ryan last season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and he also tell, and this is another thing like he, in the beginning he tells, he starts to tell Ryan about Lenny and how he and Lenny used to play foosball all the time. And he's like, but I'm, I'm not going to let you win kid. Cause he used to let Lenny win. And Ryan's like, Hey, everyone at the tower lets me win. I, it's no fun. Yeah. Like I, yeah. I like having someone who doesn't treat me like Homelander's kid. Right. Yeah. Treats him normal. That's why I'm so trash at Mortal Kombat. Everybody lets me win. <laughs> and he throws the cookies away. He's like, why are you throwing away mom's like secret awesome batch of cookies? Like, fucked it up. Too, too, much, too, much, sugar. too much sugar. Too much sugar. Too much booger sugar. And he's going to fish them out and eat them later for, to party. <laughs> <laughs> we cut to Sage um, talking to a friend of Starlight, right? Right. Well, I think she was the security woman. Am mm. I mistaken? Yeah, she. I think Annika. she works. She works at the. Um, she works at the security station for Vought, but she like knows Starlight and mm. had been seen talking to her. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and Homelander is like, just tell me what you did. I promise you'll be okay. I swear on my son's life. And then it kills her immediately, like before she's even done with the sentence. Yeah. Like they don't even find out who she was getting the information for. Yeah. And like Sage responds similar to how I was. Yeah. What did. And I'm like, that's come on, man. Like, why did you have to do that? Yeah. And also like when he says, I swear on my son's life, um, I won't harm you. Danica looks at Ashley and Ashley's like, Oh, he, that's like the one thing he loves. Yeah. Like, Ashley, yeah. like Ashley's like, okay, you can tell him like, yeah. that's, that's sacred to him. That's like the one thing. And then when he lays at her, that like breaks Ashley down. Like she immediately like, that resignation is going away. Holy yeah. fuck. Yeah, she puts it in the shredder because now her fear of being laser eyed at any any moment is back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, she's just having a real roller coaster. Not a good time. We cut to Starlight uh, in Firecracker's room. Jesus. Guns. guns babies. babies. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way you think these three things go together, right? <laughs> <laughs> Firecracker gives her the whole speech we were talking about at the top of the episode. You don't remember me, do you? Basically, they were on the pageant circuit together and she was in the running to maybe win. And Starlight spread a rumor that she was getting butt fucked by one of the coaches or something like gang that. Gang bang by the judges. But anal gang bang yeah. specifically, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a now, tough rumor to bounce back from. And that ruined her like her whole life. Her name was Sparkler, as and, we said earlier. And when she yeah. went to uh, Annie to be like, yo, girl, what's up? Annie said, like, I don't talk to fat sluts. Hmm. <laughs> That's not nice. That's she was Regina George by I, basically, Starlight. Basically, if, if you actually haven't watched the episode, and you're just listening to this. That's legit the line. <laughs> yeah, we're not making any of this up. Yeah. Like that's how like it, it sounds so ridiculous that that's a story about Annie. At least to me, like oh, I don't know. Like, well, I mean, kids suck. They do, but like, I don't know. There's something just so unbelievable about what we know of this character as of this point like mm -hmm. as a even as a kid even she it did just like, seem like she a would, lot yeah. she would say you're a fat slap like I don't know, which is why weird. it's kind of hard for me to like like obviously it's canon because she said it but mm -hmm. it's just hard for me to be like oh yeah like i get that you yeah. know yeah she had a mean girl phase in eighth grade and then she found god i don't know how that's so hard i, I guess <laughs> um oh there he is 
Oh, hi. Oh, hey. Oh, hi, Ma. God. Um, <laughs> well, then we cut You're to Vaught. You're tearing me apart, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> then we cut to Vaught on ice. Um, it's, kinda, it's like Maeve this Christmas crazy. shit. crazy. And then <laughs> we say happy holidays. <laughs> oh, the war on Christmas has just begun. It never stops. Yeah, never stops. M.M. got intel from A-Train, right? So he brought Huey with him. And they're supposed to, you know, Homelander, I think, is supposed to meet up with Newman there as the intel. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're yeah. going to plant some bugs and see what's going on. But Newman showed up early. Huey ends up getting stuck in the vents. Um, and then he hears a conversation between Newman, Sage, and Homelander. And they hear about all kinds of shit, right? Like, what's going on? What's cooking there with disbanding the uh, the soup shit, right? Like, they want her to... They're, they're going to kill the president if they she disbands the whole bureau that she's started and all the shit going on with soups, right? Yeah, they want her to condemn the defund the soups movement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I, they, they did a whole thing like you have to condemn defund the soups. You have to condemn critical soup theory. Like it's all like the things in our real world, but with like a superhero bent to it. So yeah. instead of defund the police, it's and then critical race theory. It's all that stuff. And then uh, some of Huey's sweat falls on Homelander's like shoulder pad while he's up there. It's like a Mission Impossible moment, but he doesn't catch it. And then but, he smells specifically that it's Huey. Well, Axe I was going to say, spray. I think it's important that they they want her, once she becomes president, to announce that she is a soup. Like, yes. They want, they the want world, to come out. Yeah, they want the world to know that she, like the strongest person in power physically is a superhero. It's yeah, Homelander actually, leader shit. Homelander has a really great thing where he's like, why do you want to be president? Why why do you want to be ashamed of your yourself? Again, this is that whole like, mm -hmm. if this were X-Men, this is like, these would be the good guys, right? In yeah. a weird way. Um, well, well, yeah. Well, it's you know, kind of a Magneto thing, you know? Yeah. Uh, but even Magneto is not like purely evil the way Homelander is. In the right? movies he is, kind of. Yeah, he's, well, he's like gone past yeah. saving. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen X-Men 97? Yeah. The cartoon that just came oh, out. Oh yeah, it's so good. It's so good. It's amazing. amazing. It's Haven't amazing. seen it yet it's on really my list. Good. It's really good. Talk to the hand. <laughs> yeah. So Huey hears all that, but Homelander smells him and starts like lasering the vents. Ah, it's a little run. Axe body spray. <laughs> MM is like, oh god, what do I do? Right. And then Homelander accidentally kills the the Mave, <laughs> trying to hit. <laughs> just like slices her, her in half. half. Right in half, and then fucking chaos ensues with love, these ice skates. The ice skaters are so like terrified and bumbling around. They end up just killing each other. Just like trying to run fingers. away. Their skates, like one of them, slices over uh, excuse me, fingers. fingers, and then they like fall and like cut someone's neck open. Does, yeah, the the Jesus ice skater like ends up slicing the Homelander's neck on accident. Yeah. It's wild, dude. Yeah, <laughs> but then A Train had saved Huey. Mm -hmm. And like sets him uh, in a nearby alley. Homelander can't even find him. He's like, ah, and it just takes off. Campbell. He's like, why did you do that, bud? Why'd you do that? A-Train doesn't know. He's getting a heart. Mm -hmm. He's getting a heart. Who knew that Blue Hawk's heart, heart. would make him so much more loving? <laughs> it's like the Grinch. It was so big. Yeah. Uh, Kamiko and Frenchie come back to like the warehouse after their terrible mission. They see Starlight there. They all get drunk. I love mm -hmm. this scene. I think it's, you know, there's... It's something I think, and this is where I say like the show kind of started turning for me back from where I was pretty disappointed and like there's some juice here, you know, um, and it gets even more so in the next episode. I feel like it has a major turn back to good. But yeah, like I think it's just fascinating that um, we get this idea of kind of being trapped and just doing what you're told, even though it sucks, is actually there's some. I can't I don't know how to describe it. There's some like liberation to it because you don't yeah. have to worry about your own mistakes. Because there's like, a, you know, a lot of you guys know about my dark past, but like something about, you know, obviously I would never, ever, ever. My life is incredible. Right. But there's some like when you're just like mostly homeless, scoring drugs, you don't even have a job or like there's no responsibility to other people or society. Like mm -hmm. there's some like really dark moments to that and loneliness, but also like super chill like what do you gotta worry about like it's just next meal where to sleep mm -hmm. next fix like some some like uh comforting simplicity yeah. to that existence you know whereas now i'm like i, I gotta do right by my kids and i gotta be a good friend and i gotta yeah. uh, pay my taxes set up an escort I mean, you're, just, you know? you're, you're not <laughs> like, responsible for your you're not responsible for the decisions because the decisions aren't being made for you yeah like i can identify with you're not the, making the decisions like drunken despair uh, of an insincere 
profession of missing that a little bit, you know, mm-hmm. I, I just thought that was neat. Um, but yeah, we get Frenchie's story about having no choice, being nice. Starlight realizes the truth of that. And then Kamiko's worried about Frenchie. She's like, tell me what's going on with you, you know, and he's, he pushes her away violently, you know, yeah. let's not act like we tell each other everything. Who is that girl? And she's not willing to tell him that. So he's like, huh. So I thought I'm going to go get high. Mm-hmm. Cause Starlight's like, I got, uh, she always got some weed around here somewhere. You it's know? great stuff. Mm-hmm. Cron Dawn. Oh, but do you eat? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let's all have a good meeting with our friend Mary Jane. And we'll dip the blooming onion in some lukewarm water. <laughs> 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 News uh, of the ice rink is being covered up. They said it was an electrical fire. <laughs> I like that little tidbit. So funny. But Huey goes to talk to his mom at the hospital, asks her, why did you leave? You know what I mean? Um, And uh, she tells this long story about how she had postpartum depression. And, you know, I never let you see that, but it was like a battle to even get dressed that day. And she attempted suicide and knew that it was a matter of life or death that she leave. Now, I'm not condoning what she did. However, I cried. Like Mm -hmm. this scene hit, you know what I mean? Like. It's a, it's a cliche. You never know what battle someone's going through. And I would never, again, I would never defend somebody making this decision. I'm on Huey's side always and forever. He was six. However, I think there's some, some mental health conversations we could, we could, we could have about this. And I think it's um, Mm -hmm. a deep character. Somebody you think, okay, there's nothing she could possibly say that would justify. Mm -hmm. Uh, But then she had tried calling and the dad was so pissed. He was like, just fucking stop calling here. You know, like. Mm -hmm. And so she was pushed away. She wanted to be in his wife, uh, in his life tra- tangentially and dad wouldn't allow that. So kind of, you know, you kind of get it, you know, you could see yeah. how this could happen, unfortunately. Yeah. I just thought it was great. I like that scene a lot. Um, we cut back to Kessler. He's pissed. He didn't give Ryan the Who? cookies. Uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, JDM. JDM. They, and, and he's like, look, man, you're, we're going to train him to kill Homelander or we're going to kill him. There's the two options here, just so you know. Yeah. In regards to Ryan. A or B. Exactly. <laughs> Your choice. One or two. What other dichotomies can we point out? Uh, but red or black or white. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Red. Why do I go red? <laughs> red or blue. There's only two colors as we know. <laughs> Jay, uh, Sage, we cut to her. She's watching reality TV. It's like Kardashians or some shit. Uh, and the deep storms in all pissed about crime analytics and losing his job. He's like, Oh shit. Is that a blue and onion? She's like, Oh yeah, it is. Yeah, oh, it oh, is. Oh. You want to watch transformers too? The one with the racist <laughs> robot. <laughs> He's like, do I? Shy is actually a good buddy of mine. He is, wants me to be in the, uh, honey honey boy boy too. Too. but the script and <laughs> not, not working there out. Yet. Dude, that is such a deep cut, hilarious joke that I've, cause Shia, not a great reputation, you know, as an abusive person. Uh, so it makes sense that he'd deep. be tight with the deep, but also yeah. Honey Boy, there was a huge controversy because that was supposed to be autobiographical and it had a lot of awards buzz and stuff. And then Shia came out when he got sober and was like, I made all that up. My dad's actually pretty cool. And everybody was like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> so the fact that like there's so many layers to yeah. the, the deep being involved so in all that. funny. And then she like seduces him easily. Yeah, there's something off about her. Yeah, She's very like almost, she seems almost drugged up. And there's like this bloody metal spike on the table that the camera pans to. Yeah. We don't know what that is yeah. yet. And then Homelander uh, in the, can smell Butcher on Ryan. Knows that he's lying. You've got Butcher on you. I can smell it. <laughs> and he's so upset. Why am I not good enough for you? I keep I trying. You everything. Everything I never had. That's my biggest thing, right? And he, uh, 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 Ryan storms off super upset. And Homelander has this like split personality, he punches the mirror. And we get to see like this visual representation of what we've been seeing all season. Mm-hmm. All the different Homelanders vying for the frontal lobe, you know, like mm-hmm. the one that craves love and affection, the one that is violently opposed to that and just wants to murder everybody. And then the sinister psychopathic one, mm-hmm. uh, which ultimately seems yeah. to win out, right? It's time for you to overcome this need for love. You have to go back to the start. You have to go back. Which is what this season's doing yeah. with every character. Mm-hmm. You have <laughs> just, to go back. Just going back. You have to just go, go back, back to the start. Go back to the original. Yeah. And that's the end of episode three of season four, which brings us to our diabolical moments. Fucking our diabolical. Top three favorite moments of the episodes. Madison, what's your number three? My number three is uh, Hallucinogen Frenchie. Uh, juxtaposed <laughs> with Kamiko fighting. I think it was it was just a really cool scene. And I like when 
because the, the the show itself doesn't have a lot of like it, it does have animation does have cgi for the the effects and stuff but to have like the the cool kamiko face meld and the ducks with the bubbles and i liked it juxtaposed with her action it was just it was just a cool scene and i liked it a lot uh my number three is the homelander sage newman meeting uh partially the 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 ice capade thing too but I just again I've talked I talked about it earlier. I just really like this idea of flipping the script on the superhero narrative of like the government trying to limit superheroes. Whereas you know, I'm just fresh off of watching X-Men 97, which has a part of the plot there as well, where like governments are like trying to inf- like other superheroes, you know. Um, and I just like how they're flipping that script where like, well, now it's just the superheroes are also trying to like flip the script on uh the government per se, but we're actually kind of like Maybe you should not be in the movie. Like it's, right. it's, it's it's this woof, it's this interesting interesting moral ground that they're putting the audience in, and I really like that. And I hope they lean more into it throughout the season. What's your number three, Ken? Absolutely, my number three is the same as Madison's. The Kamiko fight scene while Frenchie is tripping. Um, I think it's just like the the boys and what it has to offer mm-hmm. distilled. You know, and they've actually done this like little cartoon violency thing three times if you count Gen V, uh, and it always works every time. You know, I get why they keep bringing it back. It's funny. That's it. funny it's, shit. It's fun. It's fun. I like uh, it. Madison, you're number two. My number two is the moment between Butcher and Ryan. Um, I thought it was very. Oh, what's that face for? It's my number two as well. Sorry. Oh, I didn't mean, oh, to, I didn't mean to physically okay, okay, react. Okay, okay, okay. Whoa, like, oh, shit. <laughs> um, but it, I don't know, it's just very touching. Um, I feel like these two characters have had quite a journey with how they feel about each other and. I'm a sucker for, you know, a good father son, uh, diabolical relationship. And I don't know, it was just nice to see them, I don't know, have a moment. And I think uh, the acting was very, very good during this scene. Steve, you're number two. Let me answer your question with a question with another question. Sure. Is that a blooming onion? <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's my second favorite scene. Like I just, I, 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 when this scene happened, a, I was laughing because of all the different references they were making, like the blooming onion transformers to the honey, uh, the uh, honey boy, honey boy. I almost said honey pot. That's not it. Mm-mm. Honey boy Two reference. Like all of that so is just bothered. funny in and of itself. But I so realized bad. in that moment, like Christopher Robin, <laughs> um, I realized in that moment, like, how much I need more of the deep and sage interacting the dumbest character on the seven and the smartest character in the yeah. seven, like pairing them two together is such a harebrained idea. I love it. And I'm really excited to see that where they, good. where they go with that. That's going to be really fun. Absolutely. Kate, what, what about you? Uh, my number two is the moment between butcher and Ryan for all the reasons Madison said. And we talked about earlier, I don't think butcher gets, vulnerable very often. So it's really effective when he does. And also I'm a little exhausted. You know, I've said many times throughout the years we've been doing this podcast that one of the things I hate is like these prolonged plot lines where characters just don't communicate. And that's the source of all the compl- uh, conflict. And I think that's happening a lot so far in early season four, um, specifically with Ryan and Butcher, but you know, Frenchie and Kamiko, and it's just like, fuck, I'm fucking over it. You know, like, mm-hmm. let's, let's see, let's get into some meat, some, some plot progress. Um, and, um, yeah, so that happens here. It's like this big step forward. And I'm like, oh, okay, yes. You know, finally. I'm here for Homelander being upset that he's losing Ryan mm-hmm. and that Butcher and Ryan are communicating and we got to figure out how to get past this. Um, that's a plot I can dig into. So, really like this scene. Madison, what's your favorite moment of this episode? My favorite moment was the the Tournament of Heroes video game. I <laughs> I just yeah. I just really liked it. I know it's kind of like a very it, it has nothing to do with the plot of this of the show at all, but I I just thought it was a cool like way to show Butcher and Ryan's relationship and also like just Butcher being like, "Oh yeah, this kid is playing video games. I'm going to hack in and like and then you had the what was his name? Something cunt don't be a cunt. Don't be a, Don't be a cunt. 69. 69 or whatever. Like it was just like very playful and really cool. And I liked how they, it, it was a cool implement of the show in the video game and like the real world. I just, I liked it a lot. It was really cool. Very cool. Steve, you're number one. Uh, my number one moment is the, the interaction between Butcher and Ryan. Um, I actually like, especially when Butcher like finally opens up to him and talking about like how he is scared and how he, he doesn't want to leave the world in a state where the one th- 
you know, the, the one last part of the woman he loves hates him and doesn't want to talk to him. And I just like that vulnerability. It's a different side of Butcher. It, it felt heartfelt. And, you know, I find myself rooting for these two characters to get together. Like, like, like I want them to have that father and son relationship by the end of the show. Like, I, I and I want Butcher to be a better person. And this whole season, they're kind of making him a little bit more vulnerable because he's dying. Mm -hmm. And I think that's opening up the character in a lot of different avenues and i think and i was actually shocked at how like powerful i found that scene i was like tearing up during it and everything and i didn't expect it so that's why it's my number one okay uh, my number one is actually um huey's mother's confession um about you know the backstory what happened it did not expect to get hit with this not logical but you know sympathetic uh, understanding of someone who abandoned their child, you know, mm -hmm. and like a, there will be blood way, you know, I abandoned my child, <laughs> my boy, my um, boy, you know, we don't talk about postpartum depression and things like that. Mm -hmm. It's just very much society is, you know, your mom is supposed to be there for your kids, which like, yeah, duh. But at the same time, like life's complicated, life's messy, you yeah. know, um, I don't want to say that. I don't want to tell that story, but you know, my, my son's mother had some struggles, you know, and I, I have no idea what postpartum depression feels like, but God, it's gotta be rough, you know, to like fully love something more than anything on this earth so much that you can't even process it. But at the same time, to have these neurotransmitters and chemicals and, and mm -hmm. changes on your body and God, I can physically literally never imagine that, but I was there for the rough beginning of our son's existence. And, and, and luckily a year or two sober and didn't have a whole lot going on work wise and could really step up and, and you know, just be there you know, with the baby and help her through that. And mm -hmm. yeah, I can imagine somebody who didn't have that just really about to lose it, you know, and everyone yeah. in society telling you, Oh, it'll pass. And then right. one year, two year, three year, four year, five years. And it's just not going away. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, you know, it was just incredible. I, I was weeping in my office like, Oh shit. You know, did not expect that, especially, at this point in this show. So yeah, that's my number one. Uh, so now it's time to delve into the Vought Vault. The Vought Vault. Does anybody have anything in the Vought Vault? Any kind of Easter eggs or anything you got to pull out? We talked about couple. Mortal Kombat a lot. I do not have any. Uh, Butcher's Cookie Jar is, yeah. his, is his dog Terror. Oh. <laughs> which has been in the show, but not much. And it's a huge part of the comics. Mm -hmm. Like that's his like Batman and Robin basically. But they don't want to work with dogs. Terror is his ward. Yeah, basically. <laughs> well, I mean, it'll like literally jump in and bite somebody's arm oh, and save his ass a bunch and stuff, you know, when mm -hmm. they just didn't want to have to work with an animal and on top of everything else that's going on in the show. So they basically wrote him out. Yeah. But that English bulldog cookie jar is like a, Hey, terror. Terror. Uh, yeah. I, I, I like that one. Uh, in the, the, the ice capades thing, uh, she's talking to when they're doing the whole, like we say, Merry Christmas, we say happy holidays. <laughs> that dude is supposed to be working for jitter, jitter bean, which is the, the in universe, like, Coffee place. They go to Jitterbean a lot in the show. Mm. It was just kind of fun to see someone in a Jitterbean uniform, but it's like bedazzled. Like, oh, okay. It's pretty great. Uh, and this one's just for me. This isn't really a, a, an Easter egg for the show, but uh, w during the Kamiko fight scene where she's seeing all the rubber duckies and balloons and stuff, the song that's playing, the rock song, is a cover of the song uh, All Day and All Night by the Kinks. But from Frenchie's perspective, it is a French cover of the song. Uh, I'm going to mispronounce the fuck out of this. It's a La Nuit de la Lore, la Lore okay. by Le Terribles. Terrible, okay. Terrible. Terrible. Well, that's all the vault vaults that we have because the only one I had was the terror cookie jar. Mm. Uh, but that brings us to our final segment, the Compound VIP nominations. Madison, who are you giving it to? I you can't am... give it to the Bloomin' Onion. <laughs> Darn it. Damn it. Wow. Well, hold on. I got to make some changes. <laughs> I'm giving it to the Bloomin' Onion sauce. No. Uh, Bloom sauce? Bloom sauce. Um, I am giving my VIP, uh, my compound VIP to Ryan, uh, who was played by Cameron Crivetti. Uh, I feel like we, we haven't had a moment to kind of appreciate his performances yet. Uh, and I think, you know, he's a little bit older. Um, and I feel like, he, which is allowing him to have more range with his performances. And I really think the, the emotional scene with Butcher kind of like just elevates him as a, as a performer and really gives him some more depth as an actor. Um, and I think he just did a really good job and I'm excited to kind of see the, the other, um, 
the other threads that he's able to pull into the other abilities that he's able to kind of bring to his performance. So Steve, well, I'm actually going to do his scene partner, uh, Carl Urban. Nice. Uh, I thought, you know, he's bringing, you know, he's always been a fun character to watch. He's bringing it, but he's bringing it. He's bringing the emotion and bringing it, you know, he, how he's struggling to like overcome who he is as a person to be there for this child that he obviously cares for. Um, and I, again, just, I, just that one scene with he and Ryan really kind of moved me. And I, that's why I'm giving it to Carl. Mm. Big Carl. I'm going to have to give it to, I was going to give it to Carl Urban and I almost gave it to Ryan. Oh. And you almost gave it to the Bloomin' Onion. I did. <laughs> and also I wanted to say that I meant to point this out, but last, at some point, whenever we recorded one of the previous episodes, you pointed out that he was washing his hands, wearing his gloves. Oh, the, oh deep, the deep. And he's, he's <laughs> dipping the sauce. I never noticed that, but yeah, he like dipped it right in like messily. It's into so the gross. And he's like, and it's like, <laughs> it was gross as fuck. Yeah. Uh, and I, I would never, I don't think I would have noticed that as much if you hadn't said that before. <laughs> I'm glad I ruined the deep for you and a little I, bit more. <laughs> and I realized he just leaves the gloves on at all times. And anyway, um, but I'm going to give it to the award to uh, Rosemary DeWitt, who plays Huey's mother. Uh, again, that monologue just hit. I thought it was so empathetic and real and it found it so surprising. And I doubt I'll have too many more opportunities to acknowledge Rosemary DeWitt. So that is what I'm going to do. God damn it. God damn it. Which wraps up our coverage of The Boys Season 4, Episode 3. Tune in next Friday to hear our coverage of Episode 4. Uh, tomorrow is some, some House of the Dragon action. Mm. And uh, Wednesday, if you're a patron, you get to hear our coverage of Game of Thrones continuing. Yeah. But also soon, our summer blockbuster poll will be coming to an end. That'll be on Patreon only as well. Mm -hmm. And we've got some other movie nominations as part of our patron action. So yeah. lots of good stuff going on on Patreon at patreon.com slash streaming things. Also you tickets for our live show on October 5th are on sale for everyone. Uh, Hopefully not sold out. Hopefully not. As we say this. You better get your tickets soon. I know as of this recording, we're running very dangerously low on VIP. VIP ticket. So if you mm -hmm. if you want a VIP ticket, get those now. Uh, but yeah, get your tickets. We'd love to see you on Go October fifth. Compliment, complimentary compound V to all of our VIPs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> legally, I can't say. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but that's all the time we have for right now. We've got to go return some videotapes. My name is Kit. My name's Madison. And I'm Steve. And this is Streaming Things, Streaming the Boys. The Happy boys. streaming. Yeah, boys. Yeah.